Live, love, and lead. Live exemplarily, love authentically, and lead relationally. This is the Inspired Family Leader Program with Samuel E. Bakutana, your host, a certified executive coach, an award-winning leadership consultant, a global speaker, and author. The CEO of Inspired Leaders International, which is an international leadership development firm that empowers leaders to transform nations. And I am the provincial president of the Fathers' Union. You are very welcome to this Inspired Family Leader Program, which seeks to equip, empower, inspire, and challenge men to expand their family leadership capacity and capabilities for national transformation. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are watching us from around the world. Today, we are talking about something extremely important. If there is one thing that many men fear, is to wake up one morning and they find that, for example, when they are in the bedroom, they may not perform well <laughs> because of one or two reasons. And today we are going to be talking about one of those reasons and also bring to you good news, bring to you a message of hope because something awesome is happening. Many possibilities have come up. Today we are talking about the issue of treating and curing prostate cancer while at the same time you remain sexually awesome and tick. <laughs> so I would like you to call your husband to please sit with you in case you are a lady watching. Call your brother, send a message quickly to your uncle, your, your father, your son and say tune in to family TV because they are talking about something very critical and important. And to have this conversation with us in studio is none other than my friend, a fellow brother, a fellow father, a fellow husband, somebody I've known for more than 15 years, Dr. Noleb Mujisha Mugume, one of those awesome leaders at the Institute, the Uganda Cancer Institute. Dr. Noleb, you're very welcome. Thank you, Samuel. Glad to have you here. That, uh, Member here. of Father's Union. I would yes. have to say that. <laughs> yes, yes. Publicity Secretary, Father's Union. Publicity Secretary, yes. Father's Union, St. Francis, Francis Chapel Makere in Pasti. You have it right. My brother, you're very welcome. Thank you. It's Thank a joy you. to see you. Thank you. Thank I am you. always excited when I meet members of Father's Union mm -hmm. who are really doing a lot of awesome stuff out there in the world, making communities better, empowering uh, uh, families, equipping the nation. I want to really thank you for the great work that you have been doing concerning this whole world of cancer at the Uganda Cancer Institute. Thank you, thank you very much. And you shouldn't thank me alone. Yes, of course. It's <laughs> a big team at the Absolutely. Uganda Cancer Institute. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you for thank offering you. leadership because yes. I know there is specifically one uh, community cancer program that you've been heading for some time now. Yes, for actually 10 years. I think know? it's important <laughs> On yes. that note, therefore, yes. that yes. you go ahead and introduce yourself to our viewers. Thank you very much, uh, dear viewers. And as, as Samuel said, good morning, good <laughs> afternoon, good evening, mm. whichever time zone you're in. Mm. I am Dr. Noreb Mujisha. I head the Community Cancer Services at the Uganda Cancer Institute, where I have worked for, for all my life as, as a medical doctor. That's yes. where I started to work immediately after internship mm. in 2005 yes. in August. Wow. Wow. So viewers, you can tell how old I am. <laughs> you <know>? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I am honored to yes. be here mm. this, this night uh, talking about these things that actually affect us men. Yes. I, I don't want to exclude myself mm, of course. because uh, the subject that we are talking about tonight mm. is a very, very critical subject. Yes. Yes. And I am sure you are a father and you are a husband and it's okay to tell the viewers about it. Yes, I am married to, to, <laughs> to one woman who yes. is a woman, yes. Ruth Mujisha, mm. and we have a son, Jan Aturira. Mm. Uh, I am glad that God has blessed me with this wonderful family. Mm. Today you saw us with my son at, you know, at the pitch. Yes. Yeah, yes. doing sports. So mm. I, am, I am a very happy father. Wow. Yes. And That's amazing. Dear viewers, thank you so much for watching us. Mm. 
Uh, I can, I promise you, we have great stuff to talk about today. And I want to tell yes. somewhere here tonight that mm-hmm. if you call me again, yes. I will surely come. You are so kind. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are so kind. Yes. And I will you. ensure that that happens. Yes, as, please, uh, please. as we will manage to have it happen. Thank you. And uh, on that note, you've reminded me I would like to congratulate the Fathers Union of St. Francis Chapel, Makere University upon a very successfully held um, family sports event, family sports morning. There was a wonderful family sports event today at Makere University organized by the Fathers Union where the fathers came together with their wives and their sons and daughters and friends and it was awesome for a whole half day from morning at 7 a.m. up to noon. It was awesome. As uh, you did the jumping, the, the volleyball that I participated in today morning, the football that the fathers won, and so on and so forth. Tag of war. Thank you very much. It's important for us to be healthy. And that's one of the things that Dr. Noreb is going to be taking us through in this program. So that we are able to be strong and well and sober. And who knows, live long enough to see our great grandchildren and their weddings and their graduations when we still have all our tooth, all our teeth in our mouth and we are still well. So, my brother, yes. we have heard mm. that men, generally speaking, die quicker than women all over the world. Uh, this, is, this, is very, yes, yes. this is very disturbing. What causes this? Um, one, it shouldn't be disturbing. Okay. Because for us, mm. uh, as doctors, mm. uh, there is something actually we call biological destiny. Biological destiny. Yes. So when, when a boy is born yes. and a girl is born, mm. it's sort of the clock is said that the boy will die before the, the girl. What are you saying? What, what I am you saying mean? that biologically, mm. men... Mm. I hear many people say wired. Biologically, God has wired men mm. to, to do things in a way that mm. shortens our lifespan. Oh, and and men I keep do saying things. our so that no viewer should think that, you know, I am thinking I am different. Yes. Because worldwide, generally, mm. men live seven years younger than women. This is on record. Mm-hmm that men die seven years younger than women. Seven or we years say the earlier. lifespan yes. for women is generally seven years more, more than that of men. Mm-hmm. Now, there are small, small differences in different countries. Mm. As you can imagine, that life expectancy in Japan yes. is probably on average 85. <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> but the reason here is this. Mm. Bi- biologically speaking, mm. Um, if our viewers can remember their genetics class, mm. uh, I don't know. I hope you remember. That, uh, I only that, remember the word chromosome. I, I don't uh, know whether you know anything else. That's, that's enough <laughs> for you. So, you know, men yes. have the X chromosome and Y, and y chromosome. Uh-huh. And women have the X chromosome and X chromosome. Yes. Now, the X chromosome has a lot of genes mm. more than the Y chromosome. Meaning, actually, Doesn't women... Doesn't have 23. Uh, now, you see... <laughs> I'm trying to remember my biology of high school. You see, you see every chromosome yes. has genes on it. Ah, yes. Now, yes, those, yes, are, th- yes. th- th- those, those are chromosomes. Exactly. We're talking about genes. Mm. Now, now, the genes on the ec- or that make up the X chromosome mm. actually sort of, sort of function to prolong the lives of women. So okay. generally speaking, women, women's bodies mm. are wired to survive longer, genetically. Now, yes. remember, it's the genes that determine how an organism or a living thing behaves. Mm-hmm. You know? Yes. Actually, you are your genes. Okay. You know, that's what we say in biology. Yes. Uh, that is one. Mm. But another thing, which of course the foundation is the genes, mm. is that usually... Yes. The, the frontal lobe of the brain mm. 
for girls. Wh- which part is that when you say frontal uh, lobe and, of and, the brain? And, 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 now, now because the brain. I want us to simplify it for oh, our viewers. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Next time you call me, I'll bring images. Uh-huh. Such that even, even we demonstrate children, yes, yes, we demonstrate. Yeah, but the but frontal the brain, lobe is like which side? Uh, but the brain is the one, the, the, the frontal part. Yes, this part. Yes. Uh-huh. Now, that is the part of the brain mm. that is responsible for judgment. Mm, like making decisions. Uh, no, 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 not decision judgment. making. Mm. Judging, you, you're going to make a decision mm-hmm. and you judge the risk, mm-hmm. the value, the opportunity, the danger. Needs. Yes. Now, the one in women mm-hmm. usually grows faster when they are young, girls, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and faster than the one, the for one boys. in boys. So that means they are able to make good judgment earlier. Uh, they, they are able to judge that this decision is risky. Much earlier than the boys. Not earlier, mm-hmm. much better. Okay. Yeah, so for them, they may take longer to make decisions, but they are trying to weigh and say, is it safe mm. to drive very fast now that I'm going to Kabari? Meanwhile, the so boy if you is go saying, on, I love if, the gear. <laughs> if you go on the, on the, on the highway yes. and you see the speeding cars, 90% of those people will be men. And you so are now are telling not... us that it's much more of genetic, it's not... Yes. Aren't we removing responsibility from them? Uh, we should give Because them... we shall say, that's how we are made to be. <laughs> For us, we overspeed. I'm talking about Genetical. biology, but you know, like President <laughs> Museven said when he was talking about, you know, this sexual orientation. Uh, nature versus nature. Is, like, is it nature? Is it nature? Mm. So mm-hmm. there is a bit of nature. I see. That while we know... We rush things, mm. we are quick to decide, mm. we are quick to risk, we can nurture mm. responsibility, cautiousness, mm. considered decisions. You've heard people say, now I am giving you my considered decision. <laughs> Somewhere I'm telling you, I can ask you a question mm. and you say, why don't you allow me to sleep over it? Exactly. Since, since a bomb is not about to burst. Yeah, yeah. And you say, and when you sleep over it, Tomorrow, mm. you'll make a, a, a less risky, a, a more cautious, considered decision. Okay. Now, let me come back to the biology. Mm. Because I want anyone, any man who has mes- made a rash decision, mm. not to blame themselves, mm-hmm. but to know that we can master. Mm. On Friday, I was giving a talk to health workers, and I told them that when you know your strengths and your weaknesses, mm. you know how to manage yourself. Yes. Now, men, we need to know how to manage ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, those are the two biological reasons, strong mm. ones. Yes. But this means then that as we live our lives, mm. men do more risky jobs. Mm-hmm. You are likely to find more men in the army than women. Of course. Yes. In the mines. In the mines <laughs> than women. In the garages. You're like in garages. In lumberjacks, oh, in the forests. On, on top of very tall buildings. Among rebels. <laughs> Now you understand. Oh. So God created us that way for a reason. Mm-hmm. Now you see the reason? We rush things, mm-hmm. but this is for purpose. Mm-hmm. When the house is catching fire, the man, the man is likely to jump in. Okay. Yes. Uh, and what is the, the woman, woman likely to do in that situation? He's likely to advise. Oh. I want to tell you, the night is a night we are attacked by thugs in the house. I wanted Sorry. to engage them, but my, yes. my wife pulled me, yes. and I didn't. And it was the wisest. Mm-hmm. Because where we hid, mm. they stole what they stole, and we were all safe. There was no blood in my house. <laughs> Only the blood of the thieves <laughs> cut by the glasses. So you see the balancing that, that could, is necessary? Could, could there have been maybe even a better decision if you jumped in and you would have probably it's possible, them, but they don't take anything? In medicine, we say now we mm. are doing post-mortem. But yes. <laughs> yes. But the beauty is that were all safe the next day. And you kept watching them as they took everything. <laughs> that is for another day. <laughs> Let's come back now to why men die Why younger. men die quicker Now you see, women. because you see, in some of the things that we are going to talk about are non-communicable diseases. Mm. Now because men take these risky decisions, mm. then men are at a higher risk yes. of suffering from the non-communicable diseases. Okay. These are diseases that cannot be passed on from one person to another. Okay. Yes. They are not like and infectious. And so or... men are likely to drink alcohol more than women. Men are likely to smoke more than women. Men are likely to overspeed mm. more than women. Mm. Yeah, as we said, 
Mm. No wonder maybe it's possible that is why even there is polygamy. <laughs> Men mm. are likely to marry more women. <laughs> I hadn't thought about this. It's mm. just coming to my mind. Mm. But but I'm trying to give you reasons why men die younger. Yes. So by 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 the time by the time by the time the global population is is 65. Mm-hmm. 57 are women mm-hmm. and 43 are men. If you go in the world and you get all the people who are 65 years and above, mm. 57 are women. Now, by the time we clock 85, mm. women are 67. Oh, wow. Because, because men are likely to develop heart disease, hypertension, Diabetes, mm. uh, chronic obstructive lung disease, mm. or the long standing chest breathing problems. Yes. They are likely to be men because they are likely to smoke, they are likely to be in mines, they are likely to be in garages, driving mm. trucks, inhaling fumes. I guess even if you went to the landfill in Chitezi, Taking probably garbage. there are more there are more men than I, I always see them on the trucks. Yes. Yeah. There are a few girls and young ladies. Very few. Yes. Very few. So n- n- now my, my brothers out there, you have an idea why men die younger. Uh, and, and so uh, we need and to be I, and I feel a little to be hopeless now after all this. No, not yeah. hopeless. Because I'm telling because you. Because so it's like you naturally I'm, I'm I'm born to die quicker. Because you thought of the risky things you're, you're doing compared to your wife? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm thinking of the, the biology, the genetics. No! It's like, from day one, I, I am set up to, to die quicker, biologically speaking. No, but there are men who die older. Maybe those are... Me, me, meaning that, <laughs> now that we know, mm-hmm. we need to be quick to save situations, mm. but be cautious enough mm. To consider the decisions we make. Or maybe I think we should be the ones really advocating for real gender equality, so that uh, we equally now, have now I, our, I, our, our wives doing the tough jobs we are doing since it's equality. No, we but, also but have but a few see, simpler ones they are doing but, since but, it's but, equality. No, but but you see, we will we, be we trying. We have to survive, Doctor. No, 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 we will be trying hmm. to go against the original wiring that God did. Yes. 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 So I am still saying we should do the risky things Mm -hmm. but more cautiously. Wow. Let me tell you something. We should still be the lions roaring but not killing ourselves. If we are driving very fast to... If you are driving an ambulance. Yes. Because I haven't met a woman who drives an ambulance. Mm, I have worked in the hospital. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) Yeah. But if you are driving an ambulance wear a seat belt. Okay. Yeah. I have met many ambulance drivers, no seatbelts. Mm. You know, wow. swinging in the roads, you know, <laughs> put your alarm, be, do the right thing. We can. We mm-hmm. can. Yes. Okay. Because if men in Japan can live yes. up to 85 years, mm. why not men in Uganda? Could it be because of their strong health system that is much stronger than ours? Uh, they have all the that, medicine, they have all the equipment, they have great doctors, they are well paid. And that, they, that's a component. Should, should that's a component. Be wondering? That's a component, mm. but it's no excuse mm. for us to... To not put on a seatbelt. <laughs> yes, to not put on a seatbelt. <laughs> I didn't give you another reason. Another reason is that world over, mm. men don't seek health care. Yes, I've yeah, heard about we, that. We, we, mm. we, 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 we cannot stomach being sick. <laughs> mm. You know, we want to be sick and we act strong until mm. when things are too late. Yes. And when we reach the hospital, you know, yeah, we try to do what we can, but for some the men, man is gone. you say, I wish you had come earlier. That reminds me of things like, uh, what is it called? The annual medical checkup, for example. Excellent. Now, I want to tell you, one time, visit our cancer screening clinic at the Uganda Cancer Institute. Mm. 80% are women. Because many times, you doctors, when you are communicating, I'm giving you feedback now, mm. when you are communicating, you seem to communicate like women have very many different types of cancers to deal with 
Men, we have just only like prostate cancer. So they are telling women cervical cancer, breast cancer, blah, blah. So generally, the men's environment, the population, they think Everything women are the ones okay. that have a lot of cancer issues to deal no, with. That, that's, I, I agree with you because when we are communicating yes. uh, these healthy issues, mm -hmm. we want to communicate the communists. Okay. Because cancer of the cervix mm. accounts for 20% mm -hmm. of all cancers in yes. Uganda. Yes, 20%. 20%. That's quite huge. That's quite huge. So when you're drumming, really, mm -hmm. and then also cancer of the cervix, um, there has been enough research on it mm. that there are, there are easier ways to prevent it, easier ways to detect it early, mm and therefore treat it and cure it. Not that it's easier to treat okay. than other cancers. But that no. there is more but, research but, but, and more information. Yes, and, and the more common a disease that. is, the more likely mm. there's going to be research okay. on it. Okay. There are going to be drugs mm. developed for it. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But now I want to tell my brothers, men, yes. that men, mm. men must also come for disease checkup. Now. Annual checkups. <laughs> yes. I, wa I want to We have what you to said. go for <laughs> annual medical checkups, my yes. brothers. Yes. When was the last time you did that? Mine is now due. I last did it towards the end of last year. We don't have to wait for when we are down and almost dying before we yes. can just check our bodies to know that all is well. Yes. I yes, heard yes. about somebody, a gentleman, talking about the issue of uh, uh, HIV testing. And he said, why do I have to keep testing, testing? Then he looked at the next gentleman that was next to him and he said, okay, keep testing. Whatever you are looking for, you will one day find it. <laughs> <I'm saying. laughs> Just go and test and get to know how your body is doing. Yes. Now, my brother, you've talked about something called the non-communicable diseases. Yes. Briefly, what are these? So uh, I already mentioned that mm. non-communicable diseases generally, now people who are in school, mm. medical students, I yes. used to teach medical students, okay. I do still teach them, mm. but non-communicable diseases are diseases that cannot be passed on from one person to another, mm. period. They can't be passed on genetically, they can't be passed on, you know, you can't inherit mm. a non-communicable disease not from airborne. your parent. They are not airborne, they are not contagious, mm. you know. I know sometimes when you talk about non-communicable diseases, people think about contagious diseases. Like the, the, the historical uh, leprosy, mm. you know, the Ebola, now the, the COVID-19. No, we are talking about diseases that cannot be passed on from one person to another. Okay, so what and usually this, causes these NCDs? And, and, and this, I want to mention them. Mm. Mm -hmm. One, one... Mm. They are heart diseases, mm -hmm. which include cardiovascular diseases, actually, where we are yes. talking about the blood vessel, the mm. circulatory system, mm. and the heart. Mm. So you can have hypertension, mm -hmm. but also you can have stroke. Yes. And then you can have other heart diseases, mm. but some heart diseases are communicable, oh. like diseases of the heart valves. Those, those can result from infection. Doctor, mm. when you say they are communicable, for me what comes to my mind as a layman is that this one somehow, you, you, you can tell that they are there, communication. Ah. But when you say communicable, what's that? So, so, so I, I, <laughs> communicating a disease is passing it on. Okay. I'm telling you, uh, I don't know how many yes. of our viewers... So communicating, <laughs> when we say a disease is communicable, it means it can be passed it can on be from... Passed on. passed on. So when we say it's non-communicable, it, means it, cannot it can't be passed, be passed on. on. Yeah, and I ah. want to say this, because we have many caretakers who abandon cancer patients in yes. Cancer Institute saying, if I stay in the wood for a long time, mm. I may catch cancer. Yes. Cancer is not a communicable disease, it's not contagious, it yes. can't be transmitted. So, from hypertension, one person, stroke, uh -huh. cancer, mm -hmm. diabetes, mm. and we talked about chronic lung disease. Mm -hmm. Now, chronic lung disease, the other phrase we usually use is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Mm. What we mean here is that somebody has, their breathing system is compromised. Yes. Because many times it results from the exposures in life. People mm -hmm. who smoke for a long time. Yeah. People who work, who work in places that have excess fumes. Mm. Those eventually 
they get difficulty in breathing. They mm. can't run a race. Yeah. They will run out of breath. Okay. So these, and, and we categorize them as four. Mm-hmm. You know, cardiovascular diseases, mm, cancer, mm-hmm. diabetes, mm-hmm. chronic lung diseases. Yes. Yes. Now, so what causes them? What causes them? These are lifestyle diseases. That's why I say it, because men mm. are at high risk of choosing risky lifestyles, <laughs> are likely to suffer from these diseases more than women. So lifestyles here, what are Lifestyles, we what do you do? Mm-hmm. How what you live you your do life? with your life? Yes. How you live your life? Mm. Now, there are, also, there are also other communicable diseases that are lifestyle diseases. Okay, they can be passed on, but, but they are also... They are part of the way we live our lives. Yes. Yeah. Now, what do we mean by lifestyle? Mm. The occupation you do. Your job. Your job mm-hmm. is your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. The food you eat is your huh. lifestyle. Ah, yeah, yeah. Your yeah, yeah. diet. Chips, chips and chicken ah. and <laughs> chops. <laughs> now, <laughs> the, the, the other things you do as part of your hobbies. Mm-hmm. Hobbies. What in school you would call extracurricular, yes. but here what you would call... You know, the things you do as hobbies, mm. leisure, mm. your mm. leisure, mm. that's part of your lifestyle. So yes. if as part of your leisure, you go to the bar, that's your <laughs> lifestyle. Uh, you know? you, you've started shaking tables by uh-huh. the bars. Yes, because mm. I know men, men dominate in bars. Yes, they are. I, yeah. I talked about that yesterday in Iganga. Uh. Yeah, I was talking about yeah. the issues of men and uh, yes. I talked about where men are and the bars where... And, and I want to tell places. you that these, these non-communicable diseases account for 74% of all deaths in the world. 74%? 74%, meaning if we stopped them... Wow. You can imagine if we stopped them, we would all live for, you know, the days of... Oh, of, of Abraham in the mm. Bible, where a man lives for six hundred years. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So that's uh, and, and and the other fact I want to mention mm. is that mm. these are actually diseases we can make an effort and prevent. Yes. Because I said they are lifestyle diseases. Mm. Now, for some of them, one fact I want our viewers to appreciate: for some of them, there can be a genetic predisposition. Meaning. Somebody is born yes. at a higher risk of getting it, of, of suffering from these diseases, not getting, mm-hmm. we don't acquire them, mm. of developing these diseases. Oh, that's a very so somebody, important distinction. Somebody can be born and they are at a higher risk of suffering from hypertension mm-hmm. because they are genetically predisposed. They don't inherit hypertension, okay. but they inherit the risk factors. Mm. So like the, so, the, the one of hypertension, like what would So let be? me give you an example. Yes. If, if, if you know that in your family you've had people who have suffered from hypertension, mm. it could mean that genetically you're at a high risk. So you live your life with that at the back of your mind. But how would you I be at a high risk if it was just because of their lifestyle? Maybe if I take on their, a similar uh-huh. lifestyle. Because of the environment. Now, that's an important one. Yes. We, we learn that in psychology. Mm. That behaviors also run in families. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I watched something yes. where th- this doctor, this lady was being interviewed and she told the doctor and said, uh, diabetes runs in our family. And then the doctor says, yes, it runs in your family because no one in your family runs. <laughs> I That's thought a nice that one. was awesome. Yes. That diabetes runs in our family. And the doctor said, yeah, you're right. Diabetes runs in your family because no one in your family runs. runs. I'm talking about physical exercise. Now, let, 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 me, let me tell this scientific fact. Yes. That's Samuel. Mm-hmm. Every time you run. Yes. Every time you run, mm. the ability of the cells in your muscles to absorb glucose from your bloodstream goes high. Every time you run? Every time you run. Uh, uh, so I, what I, we are I, saying, I am running there, are people actually, there are people actually, when we make newly diagnosed with diabetes and we recommend exercise and they adhere to it, mm-hmm. their blood sugar is controlled. Because you see, diabetes is excess blood sugar in your blood, 
excess glucose excess. in your bloodstream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you understand? It's excess glucose in so your when bloodstream. So you when you run, you consume the sugar. When you run, the, the muscles absorb the glucose. Mm. They burn it to make the energy to propel you. Okay. Yeah. But then so how come when you are playing football uh, at half time they give you glucose? I thought you should be no, reducing it's, it's glucose. Big, <laughs> that's a nice one because I was giving <laughs> glucose uh, uh, at the field today. So the point is that yes. when you when you're doing it very quickly, uh -huh. you exhaust. Oh yes. Your glucose levels. The that's results. why some people can collapse because mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. for you to burn the fat, yes, you would need to really exercise many times because it takes time yes. for the metabolism mm. the mechanism in the body yes. to mobilize glucose which is already stored okay so if you if somebody wants to reduce their portability for instance mm -hmm. they need to really do exercise for a long time mm. so the fat there is burnt over time yes you don't run from here uh mm. from here to to, 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 to city square mm. and then and, you think the, the fat will the burn. Is no 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 but you can run from here to city square and you collapse yes because the glucose which was in your blood has been absorbed the, by the muscle cells yes to generate the energy to propel you so all of this is about lifestyle i lifestyle. am trying to explain this Passion, so that our viewers hobbies. can really appreciate mm. actually now i have learned that if only we did exercise mm -hmm. if each one of us jogged for one hour four times a week Eh? Mm -hmm. One hour, four times a week, I can put 10% of my salary that half of the diabetes would cease to exist in this country. Now, right. I haven't read this anywhere, Yes. but in my reading and working as a medical doctor, yes. this is what I have come to a conclusion too. That exercise is really golden. It's wow. a golden lifestyle to wow. take on. Yes. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Wow. Now, so... The causes of these non-communicable diseases like diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and chronic are lifestyle, basically. Yes, the physical inactivity, eating a lot of fats. Physical inactivity. Eating a lot of fats, mm -hmm. eating a lot of carbohydrates. You know, somewhere you and me, we have no business eating excess posho and rice, <laughs> and excess meat and peanuts. <laughs> we should have enough to prepare our bodies through the day. You better talk of excess pork because uh, <laughs> people are going to die. <laughs> <laughs> now I was dodging pork because because people think pork is the problem, but even excess rice and posho is yes. a problem. Yes, you are, you, you are now equipping pork eaters with tips. They will uh, say, but even uh, you are eating rice, hey, hey, instead uh, of just listening now, to advice. Now, pork eaters, you had better know that pork is... <laughs> Is more dangerous than rice. <laughs> Did you hear that? As brother? long as it is excess. Yes. Yes, important. Now, we should make sure we eat a lot mm. of vegetables mm. broccoli, nakati, cabbage, skumawiki, mm -hmm. you know? Those sound like uh, foods for the rich. Is the, is the poor man watching, ah, having hope? Somewhere. Mm. Me, when I was broccoli. young, broccoli. People talk about, who ate the eh? dough in my village were. Those who had nothing to eat. Maybe only dodo, but when you talk of broccoli, when you talk of cold flour, when yeah. you talk of... Now, let me... Let is me, there hope for the poor man who can't buy these things let me that talk, are expensive? Let me talk of skumawiki, mm. nakati, mm -hmm. what is uh, pumpkin leaves? Pumpkin leaves. Yes, wow. they have a lot of zinc. Bean wow. leaves. It's zamba. And, and in some place, people even eat cassava leaves. Yes. Yeah, in the east, mm. in the west, we don't eat cassava leaves mm. because we eat pumpkin leaves yes. and bean leaves, and there's a lot of dodo. Mm. But what I'm saying, anything green, green, eat it. it has a but lot not of my runji. Not, on the <laughs> not my runji. Not my <laughs> runji. Anything green. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, you're very, you're very broad <laughs> in your thinking. Yeah, but anything that you can cook and eat, yes. excellent. Okay. But also fruits and vegetables. These mm. things have a lot of what we call antioxidants, mm. particularly fruits and vegetables when they are fresh. Yes. Antioxidants that actually neutralize the, 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 the toxins, the poisons in our bodies mm. that would increase the risk for cancer, for some of these non-communicable diseases. Mm. Yes. All right. Uh, and I hope, I hope our viewers mm. have taken notes.
Mm, I hope. Mm. Yes. I hope you are taking notes. Just like the doctor has just said. I hope you are. I am. I am personally taking notes seriously. Yes. I, Every, I can see you by the way somewhere. I am learning. Yes. I am learning. I am yes. paying serious attention. I yes. am here for serious business. Please learn because yeah. my parents paid fees. <laughs> yes. So that there could be some so learning. So that I teach the nation. So yeah. one of the NCDs is prostate cancer, right? Yes. So what is prostate cancer and what exactly causes it? Before uh -huh. we can take a quick break. Yes. Now, let me first say that all cancers are non-communicable diseases. Mm. And, and I have met this when I'm educating about cancer of the cervix, whose risk factor, strongest risk factor, human papilloma virus mm. is sexually transmitted. Mm. Somebody said, do we catch the virus? Mm -hmm. Do we catch the cancer? No, what is transmitted is the virus, mm -hmm. the risk, the risk factor, yes. not the cancer. Because but there are other but things that happen. But does that virus later cause the cancer or not? Yes, but it's not the cancer that is, is communicated. Ah, wait. Eh. That's why okay, I want to come back to... Okay, I don't get the cancer. To, uh, but I get the virus that causes the cancer. Because, Haven't uh, I gotten the cancer? No, that, that no, just no. in waiting. No, not everyone who has Can that somebody virus. get that virus and they never get the cancer? Excellent, you're okay. right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So okay. having human papilloma virus mm -hmm. infection mm. does not endorse that this woman will suffer from the cancer. So can somebody have HIV and never get AIDS? Uh, yes, these days. Okay, okay. These days when people have HIV, they start ARVs in yes, time. Yes. You never meet them and say they have serum. All right. Mm -hmm. You Prostate. understand what I mean? Mm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Those are very, very nice examples, Samuel. <laughs> okay. I can see you had better come and we we'll give you honorary <laughs> doctor. Honorary <laughs> doctor. Let me know the date. <laughs> <laughs> and I, know, the I, know, I know you are a quick guy there <laughs> because you're a real man. Yeah, thank you. You don't waste time. Now, what is prostate cancer? Mm. Uh, before I talk about what is prostate cancer, I want to emphasize here that that all cancers mm. are named mm -hmm. according to the cells that become cancerous. Okay. But let me begin, maybe let me begin from what cancer is in general. Yes. So cancer usually, mm. cancer results or somebody suffers from cancer mm. when a certain number of cells mm. in their body mm -hmm. become cancer cells. Now, I'm speaking slowly so that mm. somebody understands. Yes. So, when a cell in the body becomes a cancer cell, mm. so just imagine it changes and becomes a cancer cell. Mm -hmm. It makes other cancer cells like itself. When I'm educating in Uganda, I say, Takatafari ke kubisam. Because it spreads. Mm -hmm. Form so two it cells. Multiplying. So, it was one so cell that was one cancer, cancer cell. It splits, so four, they become two cancer cells. cells. Each Both of, the of them two, split, so we have four, four cancer cells. Each of them splits, we, we have, have eight. eight. Each of them splits, we have 16. 16. Each of them splits, we have 32 uh -huh. cells. We have 64, and it continues. And it continues. So when it reaches a certain number, yes. when it reaches a certain number of now, cells. Now it doesn't even have to wait to reach a certain number. Mm -hmm. Only that a cell is so small mm. that if it's one, you will never know. Yes. If they are 100, you will never know. Oh. So they need to become a critical number that critical becomes mass. a mass, a swelling, mm. that then if it's in the breast, a woman will touch and say, I have a swelling in my breast. Oh, yeah. And this can happen anywhere in the body. But now if you have a part of the body that is already uh, like a swelling, how do we, you know that now there is a swelling in ah, the swelling? This, this is a very nice one. You see, <laughs> when you have a bi biceps muscle <laughs> yes. that you've been lifting the weights mm -hmm. and it's, it's tight, mm. the moment there is cancer in that one, mm -hmm. there will be an obvious part in that muscle that is like a stone. Mm. By the way, let me tell our viewers that cancer swellings are hard like stones. Sure. Yes. Wow. Like when you press it in the breast, it feels like there is a small stone in the breast. Mm. That's how cancer swellings are. Yeah, because I, there, I, are other, there are other swellings in the breast, for instance, which are not cancer swellings, mm -hmm. like fibroadenomas. Mm. When you press it, it's rubbery, mm -hmm. it feels softish. But mm. when it's a cancer swelling, actually somebody say, where did the stone come from in my breast? Wow. It's that hard. Now, when this 
unfortunate process happens in the prostate, then the person suffers from prostate cancer. So now I began from there so that our viewers can understand mm. when we say somebody has lung cancer, mm. prostate cancer, cancer of the intestines, brain cancer, mm. blood cancer. For blood cancer, it happens in the bone marrow mm. where blood cells are, are made. Mm -hmm. I, I guess that makes sense. So yes. our dear viewers, um, Prostate cancer is mm. this process happening in the prostate. So prostate cancer is the cancer that starts in the prostate. You know, Dr. Noleb, my yes. brother and friend, mm. you are assuming that uh, some of these words are known to all of us. Mm. And uh, I, uh, the word prostate sounds very difficult for all of us to understand. What's a prostate? Ah, so that's a good one. <laughs> ah, now, you need to call me again and I come with pictures to teach people on TV. Yeah. What, yeah. What's a prostate? It sounds like so, a botanical so, name of a shrub or something. No, no. So, the prostate is a part in a man. Mm. Mm? Mm. That is, when you look at the picture, mm. it's between the bladder. Mm -hmm. Because the bladder is below the the umbilicus, mm. yeah, it sits in the pelvis, it sits is the, on the... Is, is, is the umbilicus that thing connected with the umbilical cord here? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. So the bladder is, 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 is the bag for urine. Mm -hmm. So the prostate sits under. Okay. Under yes. the bag for urine. Yes. 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 And then the, 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 the tube, mm. the urethra, mm. the tube that brings urine out of the bladder yes. passes in the middle of the prostate. Oh, in the middle? Of the prostate. Okay. Yeah. And then also, the tube that brings sperms mm. from the testes, mm -hmm. you know, it comes from down the testes and yes. goes up and passes in the middle of the prostate. Yes. Now, whenever a man has sex, mm. plays sex, Yes and ejaculates, mm -hmm. the sperms come from the testes, mm. but the semen, the water, mm. the, 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 the fluid that carries the sperms yes. comes from the prostate. Oh. So it's a very, very important organ in oh. a man. Yes. Yes. It's actually a sexual organ. We are taking a break. When we come back, we will explain the details of that sexual organ of the man. Very welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this Inspired Family Leader program with Samuel E. Bakutana, hosting Dr. Noreb Mujisha of the Uganda Cancer Institute as we talk about curing prostate cancer and becoming sexually tick and staying, remaining sexually awesome even when you have treated and cured prostate cancer. So when we yes. took a break, we were talking about the aspect of this prostate cancer, what it is and what exactly causes it? So, briefly, Dr. Noleb, how can I know that I have prostate cancer? Yes. May, may I uh, never this have is, it? This is, <laughs> this, uh, this is a billion dollar question. Yes. Because, generally speaking, cancers cause no symptoms. When I talk about symptoms, are things that people complain mm. of yes. when they are sick. It's like when you say I have a headache, when you say I'm feeling pain here. When you have a headache, that can know? be a symptom of malaria mm. or a symptom of dehydration. Yeah. Or oh, just tiredness. You uh -huh. know? <laughs> or fatigue. Mm. But for cancers, when they are early, there are no signs, there are no symptoms. That is why mm. many people present late for treatment mm. when they develop cancer. So prostate cancer, when it's very, very, very early, mm. usually Many times there are no symptoms, okay. but there are those symptoms that we know mm. are likely to be the first indicators mm -hmm. that somebody has prostate cancer. Mm. One, difficult in passing urine. Mm -hmm. So a man goes to susu mm. or to urinate, yes, and and they need to push their urine with a lot of force. Okay, yeah. Another one that goes along with that is a poor urine stream. What does that mean? What it means is that when you're young, you could stand here and susu a meter away from and, and urinate a meter away from Five you. Five kilometers away. We used to yes. compete even ah. when we were young. <laughs> you see? Truth be told. But now if you try to compete with your grandson, 
you will beat your hands down. <laughs> the you competition know? will so, be so, so, lopsided. So, so the urine, instead of flowing, mm. projecting, mm. instead it drops down. And then you have to force it to come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I, I must put, put, put a, a caution here. Yes. That these are also symptoms of enlarged prostate. Because not every enlarged prostate mm. is cancer, it has okay. cancer. Yes. But, 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 but because it's a prostate, the, the symptoms are similar. Mm. Yes. And we can't easily segregate them. Mm. Now, another symptom is urinating a lot at night. Urinating a lot at night. Yeah. So usually when patients come, we say, how many times do you urinate in the night? Mm. say, oh my goodness, five times, six times. Yes. Then you wonder when this man sleeps. So what's the logic behind that? It, it, because I wanted to finish, then I okay. come back okay. to explain the yes. logic. Yes. And then the other symptom can be the urge to susu frequently, even mm. when there is no ur I'm using the word susu. Mm. Even <laughs> when there is no, the, the bladder is not full. Yes. You know, a man feels like they want to urinate all the time. Mm. You know. Now, usually, what causes this is because commonly when the prostate has cancer, mm. it's enlarged. Now, when, when it becomes enlarged, remember I told you the, the urethra, the tube that brings urine from the bladder, mm. passes in the middle of the prostate. Yes. So when it's enlarged, it presses against that tube. It squeezes it. And so for the urine to flow from the bladder, remember when urine is flowing from the bladder, yes. the muscles that, that close the bladder mm. open, the urine flows. Mm. But out. now, even if the muscles open, because the prostate is squeezing the tube. Yes, the tube they, is like smaller. Uh -huh, it's narrow. So little urine passes. Passes through. Yes. And because the bladder is full, the man has to, mm, to push. push it. Yes. And it comes slowly, it doesn't project far. Okay. But what makes matters worse is that when this urine, when this man goes to urinate, mm. the bladder doesn't get empty. Yeah, when the urine, urine is little, it doesn't have enough force mm. to come out. Mm. So it stays. Now when it stays, it becomes a risk for infection in the bladder. Mm -hmm. I usually tell people that like when you block water from flowing, yeah. it gets muddy. It, it, it rots, smells. Yes. Yes. So also this stagnant urine there that is we call it residual urine mm. becomes a risk. So this man gets urinary tract infection or yes. what we call a cystitis. Mm infection in the bladder okay. now that complicates the problems because it worsens the difficulty in passing urine mm. it makes the urine stream even poorer you know it makes them feel pain when they yes. are passing urine mm. the urine burns them mm. as it comes out it's like fire yes now these can be symptoms of an enlarged prostate okay. that has no cancer Oh, yes. So in other but words, when somebody gets them, they shouldn't immediately make noise uh, and say, I like, have cancer. Yes. It but could they, mean it should be something that it should be a sign that go and they check, one check you one what's check, wrong. One check yes. OK. Now, the other the other signs that come late mm. is lower back pain because the nerves, mm. the nerves that leave the spinal cord, mm. the backbone, mm. spinal cord, which is within the backbone, mm. And go to where the prostate is come from the lower back. Okay. You know, just above our our, our hips. Mm. So when the prostate is advancing, advances, men feel the lower back, mm. feel their lower back paining. Yeah. They can even feel their legs paining because the nerves are coming from the same area where the nerves that go to the legs come from in okay. the spinal cord. Okay. Yes. In some African communities, when you talk of the lower back, it has mm. a lot of superstition around it. Mm. When somebody gets a lower back, they don't think of prostate cancer possibility. Ah, what is that? They think of maybe a long time taken without doing something, so they tell them go and do some things yeah. in order for the back to go away. So <laughs> now I should tell you. So <laughs> now those things you're talking about, uh, it's actually a serious exercise. Uh -huh. Sexual intercourse is serious exercise. I'm talking yes. about physical exercise. So if I do enough of it, I mm. don't need these other exercises. Uh, <laughs> no, anyway, no, 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 brother, no. brother. One of the and that introduces me now to this key question that has been in my mind yes. as we almost wrap up this yes, program because yes, we just yes. have about four minutes to the end. Yes. One of the greatest 
uh, fears of all men is mm. the inability to be a star in the bedroom. So what can a man do if prostate cancer has come and it is affecting his game? Briefly. Now I want to look in the camera. Yes. And, and tell you that now we are able to treat prostate cancer when it's early mm -hmm. and cure it mm -hmm. without removing the prostate. No, no, say that again. Now, we are able, are able now in Uganda. Yes. For over a year now. Yes. We are able to treat early prostate cancer mm -hmm. using radiotherapy. Yes. Without doing surgery and really? cure it. No, say it for the third time. In Uganda now, now you have the ability. We have the ability to treat and cure and cure prostate cancer without, without surgery. Meaning the man that has early prostate cancer, yes. we treat him mm -hmm. and he retains his actually research shows us that he retains ninety-five yes. to eighty-five percent of his full sexual function. Wow. That is good news. You understand? That so is I am encouraging the good all news men of the evening. to come for cancer screening, prostate cancer screening. Because you catch it early, you don't have to fly out. Yes. And you don't have to go for operations. And you don't have to go for operations. You come, we treat you. I was talking to one of our radiation oncologists, yes. Dr. Chibude Steroman, today. Mm -hmm. That since we just began, we need to begin interviewing the men we treat mm -hmm. how they are functioning in their bedrooms yes because we'll have more evidence to encourage men exactly to go for prostate cancer Absolutely. screening but i want to remind them quickly yes that avoid meats and fats do exercise which eat meats foods. generally eating a lot of meat is risky i said excess fat increases yes. the risk for prostate cancer yes yeah so being obese being mm. overweight mm. Or being fat, mm -hmm. like many people say it on the street, yes. is a risk for prostate cancer. Mm. Not being physically active, mm. not in the bedroom, <laughs> but on the road, yes. <laughs> increases the risk for prostate cancer. So you, we need to do exercise regularly. Mm -hmm. And also eating a lot of fruits and vegetables mm. actually sort of reduces the risk for prostate cancer okay. in general. Yes. But also I must emphasize men should go for prostate cancer checkup. Mm. This is done for free at the Uganda Cancer Institute in Malago, Monday to Friday. No money. Say that no again. Money. Monday to Friday. Monday to Friday. At Uganda Cancer Institute. At Uganda where? Cancer Institute, Malago Hill. In Malago Hill. Yes. Uh -huh. Free screening for prostate cancer and other cancers. Yes. But uh, today, how long does prostate it take? Cancer, when, uh, one no, comes. No, no. When, when we are screening for prostate cancer, one, mm. we, talk, we take off blood. Mm. Uh, this blood we test for prostate specific antigen. I hope, I hope it's little blood. Little blood. Okay. Like, 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 like what? <laughs> we usually take off two meals yes. usually. We don't, very, have very have, we don't want to have like a picture here. of, uh, like, of a lot of blood. Uh, no. has, yeah. yes. <laughs> and then we can do a digital rectal exam where a doctor puts on gloves and mm. puts their fingers behind your mm. in your anus. Okay. But usually that we do after we have taken off the blood. Okay. We can also do ultrasound scan yes. to see the size of the prostate yeah. and the nature of the prostate. All right. Yes. And and I, I want to tell you viewers, my fellow men especially, that personally I have done it. I have gone through that that you have just explained. All of that that you have explained. Wow. Yes, I yes. have. High five. Yes, I have. Yes. I have done it. I went and the doctors did all that he has talked about and I became sure of how my health was. So Excellent. I highly encourage us to do that. Now, as we come to the end of this program, what could be some of those practical things that you, you want to end with that men can go and do in order to have and maintain good health, generally speaking, besides avoiding meats, doing exercises and eating fruits and vegetables? Any other thing that you, the yes. men can go and no, do no, the, to have the, and maintain good health? No, men should avoid alcohol. Uh -huh. Yes. Now, I could talk about alcohol for over an hour. <laughs> yes. The risk factors. Mm. Men should avoid smoking. Mm. Now, if you've been smoking and you're 65, it's never too late to stop. Yes. When you stop, every cigarette you don't take, mm. you cut on your risks. So every for, cigarette you take, you increase your you risk. You increase your risk for heart disease, for hypertension. Yes. Yes. And then also, I you never mentioned this, mm. men should go for checkup for yes. prostate cancer and for other cancers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And men, 
men mm -hmm. should make sure they bring their wives yes. for cervical cancer checkup and breast cancer checkup. Say that because again, that please. responsibility because that <laughs> men should not come alone. Yes. They should come bring their wives mm. for cervical cancer, prostate mm. cancer. Sorry, breast cancer checkup because mm. these are cancers that we check very easily. Mm -hmm. You know, and that will be opportunity to check for these other things: yes. hypertension, diabetes. So let's take full responsibility of our families. The late Dr. Malinga, who was a, a former Minister of Health. Yes in the government of the Republic of Uganda, encouraged men to actually do some sort of testing and checking their wives to ensure that their wives do not have breast cancer. Oh my goodness, and, I and, forgot and, that. And, and he made a good joke around it and he said, after all, there are many other nice benefits that can come with you gentlemen trying to check whether your wife has any lump in the breast. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been an awesome moment talking about curing prostate cancer and at the same time remaining sexually awesome and thick. We have heard that there is good news that now in Uganda there is the ability to treat and cure prostate cancer without you going for the operation and the surgery and so on and so forth. It's done in Uganda in the capital city of Kampala. So why don't we just go and do what Dr. Noleb has told us to do? Number one, avoid meats. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, but Maybe brother, I should... if you want to live longer, it's up to you. Hey, I'm talking about excess meats, by the way. I'm not saying excess don't meats. eat meat at all. No, no, no. Somebody no. is yes. now saying, yeah. thank you, doctor. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't have meat for breakfast, lunch, <laughs> evening, supper, you know? Yes. Monday to Friday, no. So, one, avoid excess meat. Especially red meat. This is beef, goat's meat, pork, mutton. Yes. Now, white meat, chicken, rabbit, that's safer. As long as you avoid the fat. All right. Yeah, because chicken has a lot of cholesterol. All right. Yes. So Thank let's you. go and do exercises. Eat more of chicken than pork. <laughs> <laughs> Eat fruits and vegetables. Please, 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 gentlemen, avoid alcohol. Please avoid alcohol. Also avoid smoking. Go for checkup for prostate cancer. And when you are coming, bring your wife along to be checked for breast cancer and cervical cancer. And if we do all these things and deal with our lifestyle and ensure we are not over-seating because they say seating is the new smoking, I've, I've been told. And we, we ensure we deal with these lifestyle issues, what we eat, our occupation, how we work, our hobbies, and so on and so forth. We will be able to live longer. We will be able to have more strength in our bodies. And we will be, therefore, able to play our roles as men. We will be protectors. You can't be a protector when you need protection yourself. You see, we will be providers because we have enough strength, good health and energy to go out there and hunt and bring back the play, bring back the game, quote unquote, the game. You know, we will be able to perform well other, uh, other responsibilities in our family, even uh, including the, <laughs> the, the marital responsibilities in the bedroom. But in case you already have the challenge of prostate cancer, now you know this is not a death sentence for you, bro. Yes. You can have it treated and cured. So let's go and do what we know we must do so that we are able to be great inspired family leaders. This has been the Inspired Family Leader Program with Samuel E. Bakutana hosting our awesome friend, Dr. Noleb Mujisha. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. God for... bless you. For hosting me you're welcome and thank you very much viewers mm. for for watching us for listening thank you so much God live bless you love and leave Amen.